Now, the elements of Kenya's tax code have been in review in one form or the other since 2011. A new value-added tax came into force in September 2013, and that caused a brief, very temporary rise in headline inflation. So what should you expect in the next phase of the tax review in Kenya? Let's find out. Nikhil here is Deloitte's tax partner for Eastern Africa, regular here at CCTV Africa. He joins me live in a studio tonight. Uh, Mr. Hero, thank you very much for your time this evening. Um, capital gains tax has been suspended, really, for longer than I've been around. What prompted its suspension in the first place in 1985? Uh, yeah, good evening, Rama. I, I think it was suspended in 1985 um, predominantly because it was the start of a stock exchange in Nairobi. They wanted to encourage people to invest in it, buy and sell in it, so it didn't make sense to have a capital gains tax. And I think at the same time, uh, the, the property market was starting to develop, and clearly a capital gains tax would have, at that time, uh, had a, 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 a an effect on, on the development of that market. So that's probably why it was, it was suspended in 1985. Indeed. Aside from uh, capital markets and real estate, what other parts of the economy would get hit by an automatic reintroduction of CGT right now? Well, the, the two principal ones, of course, are, are the ones we've mentioned, the, the, the stock market and, and, and property. Um, the, the old legislation that was on, on, the, on, the, on the books but had been suspended didn't actually cover anything else per se. Uh, one thing that did happen last year and the year before was this uh, withholding tax on the disposal of natural resource companies and, uh, and assignment of rights in their, in their benefit sharing agreements or profit sharing agreements, which effectively is, a, a, again, a backdoor capital gains tax. And I think that has had the wrong impact on, the, on, on a nascent industry. Indeed. A few minutes ago, we just had Laila Mashari there of uh, Sign Real Estate essentially expressing fears that if you do introduce CGT, to the tax code today, you might cut investment flows, which are really, really needed, to the housing sector. Do you agree with his sentiments? Uh, well, yes, there is there's an element of, of truth in that. Uh, clearly, any time you introduce a tax, and we saw it with VAT, there is an impact of some form or the other. In the case of VAT, it was inflation. Um, but I, the key point here is that if you look at our existing legislation, which has been suspended, we were, cap uh, we were taxing property gains at 10%. Now, we could just as easily do that at a lower rate, you know, 4%, 3%, something like that, um, which might give you that token contribution that Mr. Rotich was looking for. Uh, indeed. Uh, let's look back, however, at the VAT law. That had about a three or so year gestation period, very long, very torturous. Of the lessons from that experience, what are the main things that the government should avoid doing this time round with capital gains tax? Well. I believe that the, the problems that we've had with the VAT Act was that it was almost imposed upon us. Uh, we weren't really given a chance other than once that I can think of where we were allowed to sit in a public forum and say what we thought about the Act and, and, and its impact. A lot of people made submissions on the VAT Act, which to my mind were totally ignored. Um, so uh, there is a very, very important need if we're going to put capital gains tax back on the books is that we must consult with the stakeholders and by the stakeholders it's not just the taxpayers it's uh, government it's the Kenya Revenue Authority it's it's tax agents tax professionals such as myself uh, the whole variety of people because if we don't do that then I think we'll have similar problems as we had with the VAT Act which has now gone back into Parliament to relook at indeed a final question to you mr. Hira um, digressing of course a bit from our question here of CGT Madame Lagarde was in the country earlier this week and there was discussion between the IMF and the Kenyan government of a precautionary facility against any unexpected macro-level exogenous shocks. Do you think that's specifically aimed at dealing with the high current account deficit that this country is running? Uh, Rama, I guess partly it is. Um, we are running a very high current account deficit and, and uh, the, the second aspect of that though to me, the secondary aspect, is that um, is our economy actually performing as well as we think it is? Uh, I mean, I've heard numbers bandied about about 5% economic growth last year, 6% this year. But the reality is that consumer confidence is not quite as high as that. And, and consumer spending is not nearly as high as it should be. And the, the sort of shocks we've had last year, Westgate, uh, we were in an election year, um, you know, attacks in Wajir, etc. These are all having an impact on consumer confidence, which is a shock on the economy, which 
which could very well happen during 2014 as well. So maybe it is really just a precautionary measure that we're trying to agree with the IMF. Indeed. Thank you very much for your time this evening, Mr. Nikhil Hira, Deloitte partner in charge of taxes for Eastern Africa in studio there with us.